Hey, how's it going guys? So we are getting closer to corn harvest. As you can see, I haven't made much progress with getting the bunk cleaned out. We're gonna start by filling the center bunk and we got all these tires and sandbags and everything we have to clean up. Today we wanna work at that, getting that cleaned out. First thing we wanna do though is go get some corn and we're gonna test it to see where the moisture content is at and see how close we are to harvest. Today's August 26th. Last year we did the first bunk on August 30th. This year it's gonna be a little later than that. The corn's not quite ready to go, but we're gonna test it. Take the side kick out and grab some stalks. This corn was planted on May 5th, so it's the earliest stuff. So I'm gonna peel in here back and we'll just take a look at the kernels. Should have my head mount right now so I can use two hands. So you can see the kernels are dented now, the dents on the end of each one. You wanna see that and then to kind of see how far along it's coming. There's a milk line on the kernels that starts to work its way back as the grain comes in. So when we see that line, the milk line at about halfway down the kernel, that means we're getting closer to harvest. About that time is when you make corn silage. So we're gonna be chopping this corn, which means we're cutting it off eight inches off the ground and we're gonna be taking the entire stalk. So the uh, maturity of the grain, where the grain's at's one thing, we need to get the entire stalk moisture. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut two stalks at a random spot and take them back to the farm. You need to find two to represent millions of stalks. So try to find the most average two that I can find. That's one, we get another one somewhere. Now this field is right across the road from our house. So I'm gonna get two out of here as well. So I've shown this before a couple of times, but we uh, ground the stalks up the two different fields and then we have these scales and we just put a certain amount in until it's up to 100% on the scale and we'll put them on these little cookers here. We'll get all the moisture cooked out of them and then we'll put them back on the scale and see how much weight they lost. That'll tell us the moisture percentage of the feed. So we'll give them about 45 minutes or so. But yeah, a quick test you can do is just by hand. If I grab a handful of this feed and squeeze it between my hands, if I can squeeze juice out, it's too too wet for sure. So let's see if, look at that. Hey, if you notice, my dad was actually helping there a little bit with the corn. He's uh, he's around now. I had my surgery on my rotator cuff and uh, it, my right arm and right handed, so I'm a little limited in what I can do. I can help Eric some with my other hand, but I just need to be patient and then uh, do start doing more therapy. But I'm doing good and thank you for your prayers. I appreciate that and uh, we're doing well, so thanks a lot. I'm gonna start cleaning out the bunk now. Get the skid loader, get some skids out there. We're gonna stack some tires and uh, those sandbags. So I just wanna let you know, we did purchase the Kubota SSV 75 skid loader. So it's gonna be staying, we like it a lot. Uh, I'm planning to do a review at some point on it. Before I get started, I actually do need to grease this skid loader first. Go ahead and do that. Should try to maintain it if we're gonna keep it, you know. Well, 
One thing I think is kind of handy is all the grease fittings are right on the inside of the bearings. So they're really easy to find. Not that it's too big a deal, but kind of handy. We have some extra skids sitting in the feed room I'm gonna grab. They kind of collect over time. We have two types of tires. We got these uh, half car tire things that are, they were just split in half. We had to run in the machine way back when we first got bunks and cut a bunch of tires in half. And then as we expanded the bunks, we went and bought these truck sidewall tires. So these are quite a bit bigger, cover more area and they're lighter weight and you can stack them on skids and they're easier to deal with. We prefer these. We're gonna stack these on skids. We already got a bunch of them stacked. And then all these half tires, we're just gonna push around the end because we wanna fill this bunk first. We're gonna push those to the other side. We'll be able to fill this one and then we'll put those on top of this feed. We put tires on top of the plastic to hold the plastic down, keep it in place, and keep the oxygen out from under the plastic. Ethan's gonna be coming and helping me once he's done scraping the barns down there. So I have some help, thankfully. We got most of the sandbags stacked, all the big tires out. 
now we're gonna go through and repair some of these they start to get holes in the end of them we'll just dump some of the stones out and then tie them closed although this one has a couple holes so i might just get rid of that sandbag So I'm gonna call it quits out here in the bunk for today. We got most of it cleaned up, this whole side. Just a couple sandbags I wanna get tied up and then scrape all these tires out and sweep the floor. I got a couple other things I wanna do now. I'll definitely film it once I get back to this job. We're not in a big hurry because we just did that, that hand test and it came out at 71% moisture, which that's kinda of getting close, but what happens is when you go to chop it, it ends up being wetter than that hand test shows. It's usually about two to four points higher. So we're running like 75% right now. We're shooting for between 65 and 68% moisture to harvest. And so if it dries out at 1% every day, that'll put us at eight or 10 days or so from now until we can chop. But we'll see how it changes. It depends on the weather. Uh, it could be two weeks too. We'll see what happens. But yeah, I want to show you something here. Just hop up on the bolt. This is all the corn silage we have left right there it's about 10 feet so it's kind of my fault i should have been paying closer attention to how much silage we had early in the summer i figured we were fine we had such a good harvest last year but we were feeding such a high rate it ended up getting pretty close here at the end and looks like harvest is going to be a touch later than last year so we're actually going to run a little bit short on silage what we're planning to do is actually to make an ag bag this week probably two days from now Friday morning. That's the plan as of right now. So that'll be something a little different. I'll have to show you that. Ideally, we wouldn't have had to do that, but I guess we learned from our mistakes. It's not the worst situation that could happen. Yeah, we're just gonna make some feed even though it's a little wet and then we'll end up being able to, uh, we'll not be pushed so much to get it harvested and we can harvest this whenever we're happy with the moisture levels. So, yep, that's what's going on. All right, I'll uh, see you guys in the next video.